Dr Chan Nagpal, a chair of the British Medical Association Council, who joins me now. Hello there. Uh, good to see you today. Um, strong advice to keep wearing face coverings, though, so that's what the government uh, will reckon on. Yes, I mean, I think the decision in Scotland, and I believe will be followed also in Wales, just shows how much of an outlier uh, the English government is. In fact, there is no other country in the world that has adopted a position of stopping wearing face coverings or social distancing whilst its infection rates are soaring. You know, five times as many people infected than uh, about uh, two months ago. Uh, and we're seeing, you know, increases in hospitalization, uh, increases in the numbers of people with long COVID. So this is a very unique uh, uh, position in England. But, but more importantly, it's also a contradiction in terms of the government at the same time uh, urging the public to wear face coverings uh, in crowded, enclosed private, uh, public places, but at the same time saying, well, you, we, we're removing the, the legal requirement to do so. So I think it's, it's important that the government is clear in terms of what it wants to achieve, which is to reduce the infection rate. And if that's what it wants to do, then, of course, the right way to do it is to keep these uh, measures in place uh, rather than leaving it to the discretion of individuals. What do you think of the government's approach then to all this? We think that the government's approach, as I've said, is contradictory. We think it's putting ideology above the uh, interests of the nation's health uh, and the NHS. Uh, we think that a lot of the narrative is false. It talks about personal responsibility, but in fact, people cannot take personal responsibility for choices they don't have. If you have to go to work and, and uh, go by underground train, you don't have the choice of being surrounded by people who may not be wearing masks, who may breathe very close to you inches away uh, and infect you, uh, because the law now says they don't have to wear a mask. We but think that, in fact, there's no reason why the government shouldn't have continued that simple measure of people being mandated to continue wearing masks as they have done in Scotland, and I believe in Wales, that doesn't stop you opening up the economy. It doesn't stop anything. It just means that you're able to ensure some level of protection for, for, to prevent spread of this infection. I suppose there's no good time, the government might argue, to ease restrictions, so it has to be done sometime. Well, I think that's, uh, again, a flawed premise, because the government itself has shown how the uh, vaccination programme has been so successful in preventing spread uh, uh, of the virus amongst the older people who have been vaccinated. So the right time to have uh, dropped some of these uh, requirements, such as face coverings, should occur later on when all the younger uh, uh, adult population have also had the opportunity to have had uh, double vaccinations. So, in fact, the right time, in our view, would have been in a few weeks' time having vaccinated enough of the population to have brought the infection rates down. That would have been safe. It would prevent people falling ill and it would reduce hospitalisation, which I just want to add, uh, the link is far from broken. Uh, in fact, the government admitted in its press conference yesterday that we may be seeing 2,000 uh, hospital admissions uh, in August. Now, that is, you know, a significant number, 60,000 a month. That will displace uh, 60,000 other patients who are now waiting for treatment, 5 million plus patients waiting for treatment. Uh, and so uh, this is certainly going to have a knock-on effect on all the other patients in the NHS and on the pressures in the system. And there is a, an acknowledgement there could be up to 200 deaths a day, I believe, as well, according to the SAGE modelling. But the government would have considered this, wouldn't they, and, uh, and assumed that this was a, a trade-off that has to happen? Well, we don't understand why there should be a trade-off needed, because um, if you continue to have measures such as the wearing of face coverings in crowded public places, such as on underground trains, buses, uh, in, in shops, how does that stop trading? Uh, uh, people are still going to go to work. But in fact, I think you'll find more people feeling confident to go out uh, uh, to work, knowing that they are going to be individually protected, uh, uh, since everyone around them will also be taking the same protective measures. Can I just so ask you quickly, we're, we're running out of time now. The government's certainly not going to change its mind now. This was it yesterday, wasn't it? A week to go, and this is what's going to happen. Well, it, I, I, my plea to government would be to consider uh, this again, to look at what Scotland has, has decided. But if it really insists on this, then the right thing to do is for the public and for organisations, uh, and that includes public transport, to, to do the right thing 
and to protect the public and make sure they don't get avoidably infected and ill and hospitalized. That is the right thing to do. And, and I have to say that as a GP, I've got the same questions in my own mind. Why would I want patients to come into my practice in a crowded waiting room and, and potentially infect each other by not wearing masks, by not being socially distanced? It would be totally odd to, to, for people to come into a healthcare setting and walk out uh, more ill than when they walked in. So I think it's really important that we uh, make sure that the public understand the need to carry out or carry on uh, protecting each other and protecting themselves. All right. Well, good to get your thoughts, as always, Dr Chan Nagpal. Thank you for your time today. Thanks. Thank you.